All right, guys, uh, GTO is done. Uh, you see the shop in the current state, but in the next videos, you're gonna see that the wood is off the walls and the combine's back. Uh, it's not back, it's just that these videos were taken a long time ago. Um, we've got the car running and I love driving it and I love it even more now on the highway. You'll see what I mean when you see this 4X going in. Here we go. As it is driving a 60s muscle car, it was hot. Oh man, <laughs> those are nice. For somebody who wants to drive a car, overdrive is a must. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, 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 beep. That is awesome. And I don't even know what we're looking at yet. But... Okay, so this is the coolest thing, is that they actually built a transmission, a 4080, with a bolt-on bell housing. So that has the Pontiac bell housing. Did you get it? Oh, filler neck. Oh, that's your dipstick tube, oh. maybe? Trans cooler. Oh, comes with oil. That would be the cross member. Usually don't do unboxing videos, but for special occasions. Hats. It's a shifter. Transmission controller. Yeah, and that one's the money. Oh, so that will control, we'll run our e, EFI through this and we can lock the whole transmission and everything out with our phone. Awesome. I remember how excited you were as a kid when you got your first Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. I like over the box, I like that. <laughs> it's probably, it is longer, but I don't think we have to touch the floor, which is a nice thing, because if you put a um, gear vendor's overdrive on the back of the one that we built, um, you still have to modify the floor because it doesn't fit. All right, ready? That'll be the day when we wreck this transmission. You're not wanting to paint it. Oh, that is so nice. And it's cute. Like it's it's long, but it doesn't look like a normal 4080. Very, very nice. Okay, so we've got our 4X 4L80E electronic overdrive transmission that is now going into the GTO. Um, for somebody who wants to drive a car, overdrive is a must. And this thing is awesome because it pairs with your Bluetooth on your phone, so you can actually use it as an anti-theft. You can run your sniper through it. Um, you can monitor everything. You can have manual upshift, downshift, uh, trans control, brake, a whole bunch of cool stuff. So really good value on this. But the best part is that you can just take the bell housing off and replace that with a Chevy bell housing or a Coyote or a Hemi and this transmission can fit behind anything. They accidentally sent me a Chevy bell housing whereas this one says BOP which is Buick, Oldsmobile and Pontiac and if that poncho gives us any trouble on the dyno then uh, I'm just gonna send this Pontiac bell housing back and start looking for a 6.2. We're gonna tie this wiring harness into uh, the uh, harness that we already have to keep everything kind of neat um, and it's a very very simple harness you've got your key power black and battery powers very straightforward um, you've got a handheld plug and we went with the Bluetooth sender so instead of like a digital pad that you want to have since we already have one for the sniper and we want to keep it nice and neat we went with the Bluetooth uh, only two plugs that go on the transmission your out output shaft speed and your plug going into the side there. Um, if you have the six speed, then you incorporate the front plug, but that's it for the transmission. And then just a couple plugs on the outside. We need to have RPM 
you can get your tack signal off of your distributor or your coil, but it's very noisy. So if you do that, then you need this RPM module, it comes with it, very straightforward, ties in yellow to yellow, and then um, uh, white to, I forget, but I'll look it up, it's on the instructions, and black to grounds, and then it splices it for your gauges. Um, you need to have a TPS signal, so we can tie that in, we can tie this wire, this wire splits off from the plug, um, if you have a TPS like we do on our fuel injection uh, sniper, we can just splice this into the signal wire or you can get a TPS that just mounts on the side of your carburetor and this plugs directly in there. Uh, we also have output and inputs for manual shift so we can tie that in with our easy shifter. Um, so we can use the two buttons that are on the shifter for manual shift up and down. I think there's a trans brake option when we go drag racing and then that manual um, plug also allows you to do like an economy mode and a um, performance mode which is just a toggle switch that connects uh, the wire to ground. Talking up the shifter is a good idea to do before um, you get it in the car then you can get your adjustments. You want all your adjustments to be kind of in the middle um, so you still have some thread to go um, no matter where you are and uh, we also have a torque converter from TCI, so you want to stick that in and make sure that uh, it fits on, that's the right one. And before you bolt everything on, make sure that that bolts up to your flywheel or your ring gear, whatever. And uh, very important that you have all the right pieces figured out ahead of time. Makes things so much easier. So very nice, gives you all these options to make it a nice drive. Um, if you want to light the tires up, you can. Uh, but you can do whatever you want and we are going to pull the engine because the wiring harness is so simple We can just tie a couple of the wires in with our engine loom and then stick the rest under the dash and then also incorporate the dash wiring into the speedo outputs and the tack outputs. So um, Yeah, here we go all right, so we got stuff looking pretty good underneath the hood again. Um, we've got our wires ran for our gauges, oil, everything else. Um, we're gonna leave the loom off of that until that's complete, but all you'll see is the loom running right here. I managed to stick everything through the holes underneath there with the rubber, so we'll silicone that. Um, pretty big because there are some pretty big plugs, but um, this is the wireless Bluetooth sender. So we will be using the handheld and we're gonna try and link that to the stereo that's gonna be going right about there. And then all the different plugs, a lot of this stuff I'm not using, but we'll tuck up out of the way above my vent here. These are the manual shift that we can use with the controller. So those need to go to the new shifter that's going right there. For now, we're going to take it back off the hoist and get rid of the shifter. Um, we're gonna be installing the um, TCI Outlaw shifter. We'll get that in place before we put the transmission up because we might have to bolt that down to the transmission tunnel. We don't want the transmission in the way. I think we're going to utilize the original console. I think we're going to wrap this and this in a cloth though and um, also on the side and we're going to build this up and then put our stereo right here. So we'll put the outlaw shifter right where the old shifter was. We'll mount that in place. We got to pull up on the carpet and then add two cup holders, or at least one cup holder. A passenger can hold on to their own cup. And then we'll, uh, we'll build this up so it meets the bottom of the dash. So, one, first things first, let's get the car off the hoist. Here we go. And who of you wanted to use the original console, especially the, the back flap, just to keep that a little bit vintage, um, whatever. So, I made this bracket to hold the, uh, the shifter itself because uh, the hump is all sorts of different shapes and sizes that will get bolted to there and then the shifter on top of that and then this over top of that and then we'll make a new plate um, that will fit around the shifter itself uh, much more tighter. So once that's in then we can run the cable. I ran the cable uh, myself already uh, making sure that it, because it is pretty finicky with the adjustment to make sure that park is park and reverse is reverse and that I have all four gears um, and so that should be close I can just run the cable put the transmission in and mount that so here we go
Okay, so I pulled the dash out again just to make it easy, uh, but very straightforward. We've got um, on our shifter here, the two plugs on the right are for the starting, so it'll start in park and neutral, and the ones on the left, uh, straight up and down, are reverse. Then we've got a couple wiring harnesses. Uh, we've got the main power, so we've got ignition, power, and ground. Those are, The power and the ground will go right to the battery, and then I added the speedo signal, the input to our decoder gauges. Um, super straightforward there. Then uh, the most important thing is this little guy. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this cleans up the tack signal, so it's nicer. I think that's about it. Uh, we've got our disconnect. We can hook this up somewhere to disable the uh, car through the Bluetooth. So I'm not gonna make a video on that because then you'll know how to hotwire my car. So I will add these in so my car is won't be able to run without me enabling the app. And then this is the Bluetooth sender so I can tune everything on my phone. So uh, one more plug, which one's this? Oh yeah, speedometer control in case you have old gauges. So we won't be using that. We'll tuck that up and out of the way. And once we have that going, We'll crank her over again once the dash is in again, and um, we'll uh, make sure the fluid's topped up, and then we got a moving car, here we go. Okay, so ready to throw our torque converter in. We got this torque converter from TCI as well. I actually ordered this one from Summit. Um, the, uh, you really wanna figure out exactly which torque converter you want, whether you're driving on a street or drag racing or doing a little bit of both, having some fun, um, or just going for some nice cruises. Uh, regardless, they need to know your tire size, your gear ratio, um, and what transmission you're using. This, uh, so this one being based off of 4L80, it does, I think you can use a normal stock torque converter, but, uh, um, their stall is pretty low. Add a little bit of fluid. We got the max shift from uh, TCI because you don't ever want to install a torque converter dry. Um, and then a little bit on the sleeve so that the seal doesn't rip is also good. There we go. Make sure that it engages the pump. Beauty. Okay, ready to put the transmission back in again. And now you could go out and get a nice transmission jack, which is only good for one thing, or get yourself one of these nice pro point scissor lift jacks, which um, can hold up to 500 pounds from Princess Auto and use that to install the transmission. The only downside is it doesn't go very high. So you need to get yourself a stool so you can sit down on the job too. Uh, bolt it up once it's done use it for a pile of other stuff Once we get the transmission in we'll put the transmission mount in and then we'll shorten the drive shaft figure out the exhaust um, Make sure that it clears the cross member and we're golden. Here we go Okay, so why the 4x? Um, pretty simple that it's small enough that you don't have to bash your floor uh, the cross member goes nicely around your exhaust um, and we got some crappy headers we should raise our exhaust up a little bit, but you won't have that problem because you got a nice car. Just that it fits, um, doesn't mean that it's not tight though. Um, this is the fitting that has to go in the very back of the transmission. Um, it gets your return oil from your cooler and lubricates a set of planetaries in here. I had to put a 90 in here, so I took a, a piece of tube on a standpipe and copied this exact fitting, but now I have a 90 for my cooler going to the front. Other than that, um, we've got to bolt it in. Make sure that your flywheel and your torque converter have a space in there so you're not jamming up against your pump. And um, that is it. We'll throw the drive shaft in and then uh, finish wiring up on the inside and we're ready to rock. Here we go. Uh, I was just sitting on the mount just so that uh, I can figure out my U-joint phase in case I got to go up and down. But uh, the only problem with the 4080 is that it's a little bit longer than the 400. So just measure center to center on the U-joint and then we'll have to remove that uh, off. So it looks like three inches. You gotta make sure that you're kind of centered. 
So you got room to go up and down. Looks about there. And I'm good to take three and a quarter off. So all the way in would be two and a half. As far out as I would, that's gonna vibrate. That's gonna vibrate. That's not gonna vibrate. It's about three and a half. I'm gonna take three inches off. Wonderful. Now, there's a couple ways to go about this. One, uh, you can bring it to a drive shaft shop, tell them to take three inches off and they will balance it for you and put everything back together again. Or you could be like me and what we'll do is we'll line up the u-joints the yoke so the yokes have to line up we'll put a straight edge or a string across and then mark it exactly where that u-joint is supposed to go then we'll cut three inches out from here so we'll cut three inches off cut the rest of the tube off of the yoke jam the yoke back in it again get vince to weld it which is going to look nicer than this and then if there's an issue we can still send the drive shaft out to get balanced or if you do have a vibration you can take a, a hose clamp stick it on there take it for a drive if it gets better move the move the the u-joint around see if it keeps getting better or gets worse and where you get the least amount of vibration well the washing anyway here we go vibration I just put a transmission in and we did just shorten it but if that wall was in there then uh, just make me a new drive shaft I think that's what's gonna happen yeah. <laughs> sometimes if you get a little tiny bit yeah you can heat it straighten it okay but that's a lot yeah that is yeah. so is there a, is there a reading where it says how much it's yeah. off does it just say you're screwed well I can't watch <laughs> two point Zero four ounces on the front, two point two seven on the back. Yeah, so that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay, can you whip yeah, one up I, in the next hour? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can uh, take a measurement. Yeah, it's it's wobbling really bad. We'll take a measurement and then he'll have to bring the tranny yoke back. And... Yeah. Okay, so I got the exhaust back up, and uh, I got the mount in place. Now I had to flip this bracket around on the inside and drop my transmission down because I had, uh, I'm very close to that bolt at the top there, you see that? It's just about to touch, but what's important is measuring your pinion angle right here, um, where it is in the car. Ideally you want two to three degrees um, with the back of the transmission being lower than the front. Um, and whatever it takes to get your transmission mount to get that in your typical in your application is what you need um, Simple little app on your phone. will do that for you. I got an angle meter um, So basically you just put that on your, sh on your shaft there. So I got five degrees which isn't terrible um, but basically what you want to do is make sure that you have the opposite on your diff so your front u-joint is moving at the exact same rate as the back u-joint 
Um, so once we've established that, so I am four degrees right there. Yeah, four, five, uh, about five. Hey, perfect. So we're we're the, we're perfect, um, and you can tell that the diff is pointing up. Um, if you've got an issue, those QA1 upper links are perfect because you can tilt your diff front to back to get you whatever angle you want. So um, we did weld our drive shaft. If we have any issues, we'll get our drive shaft balanced, but uh, we're good to throw our drive shaft in, uh, plug it in and wire it up. Here we go. Okay, um, we've got our controller hooked up. So we wanna see a red blinking light um, you can get it with another screen, but I've already got too many screens. So I opted for the Bluetooth controller. So we can connect easy TCU and the anti-theft is as simple as uh, hitting that to lock it and unlock it. Let's do the setup with you. Set it up. We've got 4L80, 4X80, continue eight cylinders because we don't have a Honda. I think we've got 240, 40, 17s, I believe. I got double check. We've got 235, 45, 17. So this, this will be your speedometer and we can change this if our speedometer is off, but 4,000 is a good place to start. Rear axle, I think we had three, 309. I gotta watch the video now to see what rear end I have and I might have to change it now that we got overdrive. Um, max shift RPM. Well, we'll play safe at 2000 right now. And calibrate the min. So that's zero. It needs to know where your throttle's at. Max. So we'll hold our throttle down. Calibrate max, 355, so that's good. We got a different reading, it's seeing it. Continue and save and complete. Sending data to TCU. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, 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 beep. Cycle key for 10 seconds. Okay, so my TPS is wrong, but the temperature is right, and so is the volts. And I'm in park, so that's good. And I got an RPM reading, so that's the important one. Yeah, so that's awesome. Um, I had a little bit of screwing around to do with the RPM sensor because um, it's got the, the one wire to go to your TAC and to do a nice clean signal but the holly couldn't read off of that yellow wire. So I had to put the holly before the uh, TCI sensor and then the dash, if I added the dash before the, the controller, the holly wouldn't run. So I have to run the dash off of the extra wire from the TCI and the TCI has to be after the holly reading. But We've got a uh, tack reading now on the dash on here and on the holly. It runs. Now what we need to do is jack up the car and put it in gear just with no load on it. Make sure that we're moving the tires. And then seats and interior. We got a running car down the road again. Here we go. It's getting kind of hot in here though. Let me just, let me just turn that. Oh, oh that's nice. Oh. A little bit of fresh air just blowing at me. Okay, Let's see if we can get some wheels turning. To you guys, it might not be a big deal. Oh, good for you, Rich, you got the transmission. You don't understand how long it's taken me to get a transmission on the proper torque converter through COVID with parts across the border to make this happen. So um, we'll just pair here and then uh, We will go from there. I think everything's working except the TPS, but we're just making sure that they move, um, get all the fluids through. We'll check the level and then we'll go from there. No horrible. 
terrible noises, no nothing. That's a good day. Brakes still work? Look at that. Brakes still work. Woo! Beautiful. All right, bring her back down again and keep carrying on. Here we go. Okay, so transmission's in. No more backing in and out of the car so we can put the carpet back in again and put our new seats in it. Hoogie's lost a lot of mobility, so we need to get some comfortable seats for him. And uh, he really liked the Mustang seats. So we got similar seats. Their power allows him to go up and down and tilt forward and back. Um, and uh, we can move the seat even farther back. It was really tiresome driving them in the stock seat. So we sold those. They were leaning to the left and stuff. These are nice and firm. So uh, we're gonna modify the back brackets. I've already cut the, the Ford brackets off. And what I'm gonna do is make a plate that goes across and then comes down and goes into the bolt holes. Take a little bit of screwing around, but uh, very well worth it. Two wires, um, I got rid of the seat belt dinger and the airbag stuff. And then it's just two wires to make it do all the functions. There's no memory, there's no nothing stupid, just uh, I've got the extra wire for the window regulator, which will draw about the same amount of power. The passenger side is manual slide forward and back, and then uh, we're good to go. Here we go, almost there. guys one little mistake and that's why we're here we make mistakes i took the tps signal off the sniper can't do that once you share it i got it working no problem once i adjusted the tps a little bit it worked for a bit but then if you tromp on it it kicks out the the transmission because the sniper likes to dominate that tps signal so um, i need to get a remote tps for this and figure out a separate setup for that because uh, they don't like sharing so if you're carbureted, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. If you have a cleaner signal off of a LS or Coyote, it's a different setup. But for now, I need to order a remote uh, TPS. So while the car is down for a bit, might as well tear something else apart and do another massive upgrade. I, I, I love this car a little bit more each day and you're gonna see exactly why. And remember, if you're not filthy, if you're not rich, Get out there and work on it. I love working on it just as much as I love driving it. I love this car. Here we go. 